Welcome everybody to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today we're going to be jumping into a Georgia prison system to speak about not one, but two inmates that lost their lives within a couple weeks of each other. And there's a couple similarities to these killings that we're going to speak about, and I'm going to give you my two cents on why they got got in the way that they did. But first and foremost, my condolences go out to the families, man. They want answers. So hopefully this video will help them get some justice as well. What makes these stories even worse is both of them were about to be coming home. Always the worst kind of stories, but let's get into it. If you enjoy this type of content, all things lock up and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now the sad story begins with Mr. Ryan Archer, 26, from Griffin. He was due to be released from prison in January 2024. Ryan's father, Michael Archer, said he last spoke to his son December 11th. He was having a little trouble inside, but he did sound good on the 11th when he called. He knew Ryan wasn't telling him everything he was going through behind bars. He believed Ryan didn't want his family worrying about him, and that's absolutely true. You know how many situations I had in prison where, uh, yeah, I could have died? I had a shot caller for the blood say that I dropped dime on him for a shank. And I didn't know him or anything about no shank, period. Just imagine that situation after it took place, man. I could have died right there on the spot. But people knew I was solid. I would never do something like that. He used me as an escape goat to run from whatever he was running from. Did I call home and tell my parents about any of these type of situations like that? Nope. Only one time did I tell my parents about a situation I was having where I broke my cellmate's TV and he was doing a lot of time, man, so I had to get that right. I didn't mean to, you know, it was just an accident. The point of the story is a lot of people, man, the majority of them don't tell their family about their issues in prison. We call home to escape prison. Mr. Archer also said that he thinks uh, Ryan didn't discuss anything out of fear of someone getting caught up behind it. You know, a lot of people will call home, tell their family about some issues, and then their family call the warden. Next thing you know, the guy that uh, was causing to do trouble gets packed up, goes to SAG. Oh, whatever you want to call it, but they leave you there in the pod and everybody knows what just happened. It is absolutely true. Inmates don't tell their family because it could turn out to be them looking like a snitch. However, while Ryan sounded good on the phone, Michael said his fatherly instincts knew things weren't great. He said that in his most recent mugshot taken by the GDC, you could see bruising on his son's face. Mr. Archer said after he spoke to his son on December 11th, the next call came from the GDC, telling him his son was dead. The Georgia Department of Corrections confirmed the death of a coastal state prison inmate, inmate Mr. Ryan Archer, on Wednesday, December 13th as a result of an altercation with another inmate. Archer was sentenced to 10 years for possession of drugs and a firearm. He was to serve two years of the 10, with a maximum release date of June 2024. He was right around the corner. Now this is the key here. Mr. Archer was killed immediately after being transported from Wrightsville to Coastal State Prison. The next thing I know, uh, he's moved off to Coastal from Wrightsville and he made it less than 24 hours down there. Just 24 hours, how could this happen? I'm gonna break it down. But I mean, I'm only left with a couple things to assume here. Keep in mind, I've been to prison two times. I was in the mix. People would come in from a new prison, get jumped, stomped out right off the break. There was reasons though. But first, let's jump into the second inmate story. Another family's been reaching out for answers as well for their son's death. While doing so, Mr. Archer, the father of Ryan Archer, who died in prison as well, reaches out to this family. They're linking up. These families, they've had enough of it. There's so many people dying in these prisons that they got groups and genres to try to get justice, man. It's ridiculous. Them groups shouldn't even exist because people shouldn't be dying in prison if they ain't got a death sentence. If you can't house inmates appropriately, then you shouldn't be housing them at all. I understand that violence will happen regardless no matter what, but a lot of these situations could have been prevented if they had proper staffing, proper process and procedure going on. A lot of these prisons, man, these guys were in the show. They're hooligans. Worse than the inmates themselves. Soon enough, they'll be in the same prison that they're over there watching. But anyways, Mr. Archer gets in contact with the Dorsey family. Turns out Mr. Martel Dorsey, 32, of Atlanta, died November 24. The GDC confirms the death of an inmate Martel Dorsey on November 24, 2023, as a result of an altercation. Staff witnessed inmate Dorsey run out the dorm as he was being chased by several other inmates. Mr. Dorsey was stabbed multiple times until he was dead. 
The staff immediately went to Dorsey and began rendering aid and called EMS. He was transported to a local hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Mr. Dorsey's mom said he wasn't given a death sentence. She admitted he wasn't no angel, but he was only serving a few months after violating his probation. The GDC said it was tied to a couple of charges, including entering an auto and theft by shoplifting. Minor crimes, man, that in other states they wouldn't even sent him to prison for. The mother said that Martell had already been approved to be released back in July. My last text from my son was on Thanksgiving. He said he loved me. She mentioned that he was just transferred to Calhoun State Prison. These are the similarities. Both of these individuals were transported to a new prison and died immediately. How can something like this happen? This is just my two cents. I'm not stamping it. See, uh, first, my first time experiencing uh, where you can't run from issues in prison. All right, I was in a cell block where, uh, well, every cell block I went to, I gambled. I mean, I gambled a lot. I wasn't running up no crazy debts or anything. I knew my limit. But one day, I found out that one of my homeboys came to the prison. He's on the other side of the compound. So I was trying to get to him. Had my tricks of the trade to get over there. Ended up getting packed up. But I owed a few people some dollars, right? It wasn't nothing major to the point where I was scared packing my stuff up. Like they were going to kill me over it. I will just give it to you, ship it to you somehow on the flip side. But it was going to be hard because this prison was massive and... It's like a whole nother world on the other side of the prison. You ain't gonna see anybody from this side anymore. Unless maybe a softball championship, basketball championship, and they let certain housing units and buildings go there at the same time. Something like that, right? But either way, I pack my stuff up. I'm leaving. I'm going to the other side of the compound. Try to find my homeboy. I get in this golf cart, right? With my bags, I'm cuffed up. And they're driving me across this big open concrete pad. Looks like an airport to the other side of the compound get there unpack my stuff and this random black dude from the top tier is like waving me over and i literally just got there man nobody knows me over here man all these faces don't none nobody looks familiar i go up to him man because i'm not gonna say no i'll go up and see what's going on and he tells me that i owe money i left the pod owing money to someone over there to give it to him i'm like damn word guy here before i even got my shit off the golf cart right so uh, I wasn't in no trouble or nothing, man. I just told I told him exactly what happened. I was trying to get over here, get to my homeboy, man. And he was over there. I ended up linking with him. Everything was good. Gave dude a few dollars that I owed a homeboy. He probably never gave it to him. Kept it for himself and said he never paid it. Who knows? The game that's ran in prison is crazy. But either way, that just goes to show you how fast word goes to the next cell block. And they know where you're being moved. Look, they got a phone in like every cell block, every prison. It's all connected. A big web, man. There might be some places where you can duck, bob, and weave. But for the most part, especially in the same compound, them units and buildings, they will be linked some kind of way. So me knowing that and seeing other stories from the past, if I were to guess, these guys, the reason why they died immediately coming into these prisons, they were probably running from a situation from the last prison. That's why they were shipped to begin with, if I were to guess. You owed a debt, snitched on someone, running from an issue... Or you're coming in fresh doing them gang politics that you learn from the streets and realize it's all fake. All kinds of different scenarios could happen as to why someone get beat up and killed immediately stepping foot into a compound. But those are like the two most popular. I don't know, but these two guys died in prison right before they were going home. Me personally, every time I got under six months before my release... I'd be dreaming every single night about freedom, man, planning my departure. One of these guys, Mr. Archer, he had a daughter. He probably dreamed about her 24-7. Couldn't wait to get back and raise her the right way. Ends up getting beat to death right before he comes home, man. Crazy, right? So, uh, it could be anybody. These guys are just like me and you. I mean, of course, some of y'all ain't committing crimes going to prison, but they're human beings, man. Living the same type of lives with the same type of schools. Just got caught up for something petty. Dude was breaking into a car and shoplifting. I mean, I did all that stuff, and look at me now. I changed my ways completely. So, you know, it's sad to see these guys lose their life before they even had an opportunity to turn it around. They're right there at the gate. Something's got to change, man, and hopefully it comes in 2024 because a lot of people been dying. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video brought a little awareness to what's happening inside the GDC. A lot of tomfoolery, I'll tell you that. Inmates dying, parents waking up in the middle of the night with extortion threats. If they don't pay, their kid's gonna die as well. 
Not only are those inmates being sentenced and being punished, but their family members as well. It has got to change. I don't know how, but something drastic has to be done. Let me know in the comment section below what you think would help. But stay tuned, we are not done with the Georgia Department of Corrections. And once again, my condolences go out to the families. Very, very sad stories, ladies and gentlemen. Until the next time, as always, y'all be easy, be safe, and most importantly, stay free.